Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo. In case you missed any of the previous lectures, you know, definitely you know what to do. Click on the links below and it'll take you back to the previous lecture. Today what we're going to do is talk about hypoparathyroidism. Before we get into uh, some of the signs and symptoms of hypoparathyroidism, let's do a quick recap just to remind you guys in case you did miss last week's lecture. So we got four parathyroid glands, you guys already know that. The chief cells in the parathyroid glands is what synthesize and secrete the parathyroid hormone. The parathyroid hormone works through the cyclic AMP signaling pathway, so don't forget that as well. What is the net result of PTH, parathyroid hormone? Well, it's going to increase calcium levels and decrease phosphorus levels. So today's lecture, what are we talking about? We're talking about well, what happens when there's too little PTH. Well, too little PTH, as you can imagine, will lead to hypocalcemia, low calcium levels. It's going to lead to increased phosphate levels and it's going to lead to decreased vitamin D levels. And of course, if you paid attention to the last two videos, you'll understand why vitamin D will be low and why phosphate levels will be high. So now let's first start talking about the signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia. The first thing we have is the Chevex sign. Tapping of the facial nerve is going to elicit contraction of the facial muscles. How are you going to remember that? Chevex starts with the letter C and think about the cheeks. When you tap the cheeks, cheeks also starts with the letter C. Good. The second sign we got over here is called the trousseau sign. Well, what do you do? You take a blood pressure cuff and you wrap it around the patient's brachial artery. You know, you uh, pump it up, pump up the pressure, pressure above the patient's systolic blood pressure. About a few minutes later, the patient's gonna exhibit carpal spasms, okay? How are you gonna remember that? The trousseau sign, think of the letter T, you're wrapping around the patient's brachial artery, but also think about the letter T, the triceps. So T for triceps, awesome. We drew a heart over here to remind you guys that this is going to elicit a long QT syndrome. When we talked about hypercalcemia the other day, we said short QT syndrome. So keep those two distinguished. The patient is going to experience some numbness and tingling around the fingertips, around the uh, oral area. So don't forget that. And of course, we know when we have low calcium levels, like we said, we're going to have low vitamin D levels. We're going to talk about these two conditions later on in the musculoskeletal section, rickets and osteomalacia. But just to give you guys a heads up, rickets is in uh, low vitamin D levels in kids. Osteomalacia is low vitamin D levels in adults. Good. Let's talk about the causes now. The most common, common cause of hypoparathyroidism in, is in fact neck surgeries, neck, head surgeries, anywhere where you're going to actually go in and do something invasive. So some examples are when you're taking out the thyroid gland for some reason or a part of the thyroid gland, so thyroidectomy or something to do if you got to take out a parathyroid tumor, so a parathyroidectomy. Of course, why else would you do surgery over there? You got the cancers of the head and neck. So that's your number, number, number one reason why patients will exhibit hypoparathyroidism. Another cause, autoimmune destruction of the parathyroid gland. Okay, so think about autoimmune the stuff that's gonna come in and destroy the parathyroid gland. The third thing we have over here is you're gonna learn about it. We're gonna talk, talk, talk in lots of details about it in the immunodeficiency lectures. But just to give you guys a heads up again, it's the failure of the third and fourth pharyngeal pouches to actually descend. What does that lead to? Absent parathyroid glands. So of course, if the patient has no parathyroid glands, calcium levels will be completely low. And lastly, what are we seeing over here? Low magnesium levels. Now we brought up this topic back in when we first introduced the parathyroid hormone a couple of videos ago. We said when you have low magnesium levels, that leads to low PTH, low parathyroid hormone. And of course, low PTH, it leads to low calcium. Why do we actually need magnesium? Magnesium is a cofactor for cyclic AMP, like we discussed over here. Without cyclic AMP, you're not gonna get activation of the parathyroid hormone. So keep that very, very important fact in mind. I drew over here a little cartoon. Now I gave you guys a mnemonic the other day. I said the causes for low magnesium levels, we can say it's either a dad or data. Now if you remember the Father's Day special lecture, that's when we discussed that. And of course, I did not draw this cartoon to represent anyone's dad or father. But this is what I'm trying to show you, diarrhea. Some causes for low magnesium include diarrhea, aminoglycosides, alcohol, and diuretics. How do we say we're gonna remember this? We said, well, dads like to drink alcohol. Alcohol gives them the diarrhea. Dads don't like to take medications such as aminoglycosides. And dads, after they drink lots of alcohol, they need to go urinate. So there's the diuretics. Awesome, guys. Lastly, we just wanna discuss uh, briefly some of the treatment. Now, the treatment is pretty self-explanatory with the mild or moderate cases of low calcium levels. We give oral calcium supplements. Severe cases, what do we do? We give this over here, IV gluconate. So remember that for sure. And of course, you can always add some vitamin D calcitrol supplements as well. That's it guys, that's it. Now that was our discussion today on hypoparathyroidism. You know, again, in case you missed any of the previous lectures, don't hesitate, click on the links below, or you know what, in just a couple seconds, a window will pop up and you can just click on that and it'll 
you know what it'll do. So uh, next week, what we're going to do, we're going to introduce the concept and the topic of cortisol. We're going to talk about the physiology as well as the functions of cortisol. So definitely come back next week, Monday, and we'll talk about that. In the meantime, what do you guys got to do? You guys got to give this video a thumbs up. You know, share the video with all of your friends, uh, subscribe to the channel, and definitely comment on the sections below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to learn about in another uh, video in the future. So until then, Promo signing off, and we'll see you next week on Med School Mondays with Promo.